Hi everyone, it's Melanie Warner here with Defining Moments TV. So excited that you could be here with us today. I have a very special friend with me who is celebrating a lot right now. I can't wait for you to hear her story, uh, her defining moment, her journey as an author and a speaker and a consultant and what she's been able to do in such a short amount of time is going to blow your mind and inspire you so much. So please welcome to our show today, Katherine Johnson. Katherine, thank you for being here. Thank you so much for, for letting me come on and, and share my story. I'm really excited. Oh, I'm just so happy for you. I, I know you've put a lot of effort into this and, and this is where, where I love doing these shows because I want to inspire you to take mm -hmm. action in your life and yep. your business. All of you guys out there, you can be inspired by her story. So first of all, I love to get started with sharing a defining moment. Would you mind sharing something uh, just as our theme of our show, a defining sure. moment? Yeah. Um, and this actually plays in well to the, to what I talk about later, but um, my whole life, my father always said, and he was a lawyer, my sister was a lawyer, everybody in my family were lawyers and even my grandmother. But um, he said, you know, Catherine, you have too much of a business mind. You have to get a business degree. And I'm like, no, I don't want to do all that math and statistics and science and all that stuff. So um, I was, went to IU and he said, he'll pay for any degree as long as there's business in it. And I said, but I want to be a journalist. So I business journalism. So when I, when I graduated from IU, I was the only graduate from my class that actually got a job in New York City as a journalist. And the only reason I got a job working for a fairly well-known organization was because I had a business degree. So that sort of started me on my journey. He, my dad then said, what else do you need? And I go, well, an MBA would be nice. So he helped me go through that program and supported me. And then he, when I became an MBA and I've gotten consulting, which is my energy industry, then he said to me, what do you really need to be successful? I said, well, a doctorate, because if you have a doctorate, everybody thinks you're smart. And he goes, okay, find a program, find out how much it pays for, how much it costs, and I'll, I'll support you. So um, it took a while. I graduated from University of Southern Queensland with a doctorate in business administration. I taught I, my whole dissertation on the electric utility deregulation at the time that was you know going everywhere sideways. Um, and ironically, um, 11, uh, the day he, the last thing he said to me before he died was finish your dissertation. I finished it four years to the day he died and I dedicated Aww. it. So that's amazing. That's amazing. My defining moment has been my father. Um, sorry about my dogs. My defining moment has been about how my father really just saw something in me, saw my entrepreneurial spirit and channeled it. And I'm really, I, love never, that. I love that. And it's funny, that's near and dear to my heart, your story. Thank you for sharing. My dad's also an attorney. Everyone in my family, it seems like is an attorney, multiple generations of, of, yep. of lawyers. And um, he was the same way always. I mean, he's thankfully he's still with us, but you know, he's very supportive has always made me feel like I can fly. And I think right. as a parent, that's the greatest gift you can give your kids is your own happiness. And that, and that un unbelievable and, un you know, belief. Um, exactly. so that's pretty cool. So you, you, you have more degrees than a thermometer, my good <laughs> woman. Uh, and you, and you know, and a lot of, I see a lot of people that are super, super smart, but they don't always take what they've learned and put it into action, right? Mm -hmm. They kind of get in that mode of just going to school and staying in that safety net. How did you break out of that? How did you go like, okay, now I've learned all this and I have this entrepreneurial mind. And I've got this formal education. How do I apply that in the real world? Well, you know, part of it was I, I got involved in energy consulting. Um, when I got out of my MBA program, I we, we moved to a place in Missouri, St. Louis area, and I stumbled upon a job in a consulting firm. And they had just landed this huge contract for a big, well-known utility to do customer surveys and market research and all this stuff. And I knew learned all about that in my program. And they said, but can you write? So yes, I can write. So I got hired for that because I could write. I could write what the numbers meant as opposed to just X is Y and Y is X or whatever. And um, that really gave me an inside look into the energy industry from really the every every level. We were there almost every week for months on a time. And I would I would talk to the CEOs. I talked to the, the people on the uh, the utility line. Moment. I had a whole holistic view of what an energy utility goes through and how important energy is, electricity especially is to people. And we spent we had to did five thousand interviews with customers. And the, the the biggest concern is what happens when the power goes out. 
And it just sort of struck me as how fundamentally important electricity is, gas too, but electricity is to the modern world we live in. And when the power goes out in a major city, um, life stops and energy becomes, so energy is, electricity is not only, you know, sort of essential to our well-being, it's the, it's the mechanism that propels us into the future. So I really kind of really was, I've also been a big fan of Ben Franklin my whole life. So of course I had to go to the energy industry. And then once I got that consulting project and then I moved and they, I got hired again because somebody said, oh, another consulting firm said, oh, I read your report. Yo, okay, you can work for us. And so I started building my career in energy consulting. I worked for trade association for a few years. And then I went on on my own the first time and um, tried to build a little business and it got bigger eventually, but you know, the doctorate really helped, really, really helped. I love that. And it just gave me the confidence to go out and do things. Like, I think the thing about people that have multiple degrees is it shows the world that they know how to finish things. Exactly. Right? It's not just start, but finish. And it sends a strong message that you finish things. And that's important, whether it's a job or a career or um, building this expertise like you've done. Right. Yep. Tell us, yeah. how did you then take all of that, that energy, so to speak? I mean, you are a powerhouse, no pun intended. And you have all this energy, you have all this knowledge. How did you turn that into like what you're doing now? And what are you doing now? If you can share that with everybody. Oh, sure. So, so one of the things I've been doing my whole career um, is because you want, as a consultant, you have to get out in the world and you have to go to conferences and you have to give papers and you have to present. And so I do that. And I, but I try to do it in a way that is commonplace, everyday language, because even the people in the room might not necessarily know all what all the acronyms are. And um, and so I've always tried to present energy if information in a normal, like everyday language, which is what the book does. So what I've done in my career is I've spent a lot of time um, you know, getting getting information. And now I have a podcast where every week it's the KJ show on the bolt, and you can get on a speaker or everywhere. Um, the uh, KJ show basically talks about energy issues, energy policies. Um, we're going to have an interesting show next week about the election, but also just everyday things like why we need our energy efficiency vegetables before we do our renewable energy desserts, meaning energy efficiency is a practical, inexpensive way to really save energy and lower your bills. And you can help the planet at the same time if that's something you're going to care about. But I've talked about all kinds of things on my show um, for 102 episodes now, and I try to bring these esoteric ideas about what is what is climate change? What is weather? What is, how does that affect things? Or, or why in the world do you want to put solar on your roof? Or maybe you don't. And what, what are the pros and cons? So I try to pre prevent, uh, present a, an objective approach to a very complex subject in everyday language. I love that. And your, your podcast, congratulations. You're at 20,000 downloads every month. I heard that's exciting. Yes, yes, exactly. Yes. It's a really lot to celebrate. Yep. Yep. And, um, and I, it's basically, I expand upon, um, the book, the handbook is more about practical everyday solutions. If you have a home or an apartment or you have, you're looking to say, you know, how do I, my, why is it so cold in my house or why am I drafty or why, you know, why am I uncomfortable? And so I'm just trying to explain these simple things you can do. You don't have to go build a very expensive, fancy house. You can do some pretty interesting little things and save energy. But more fundamentally, I also have the chapter, and this is the chapter that got the best, best reviews from my reviewers was you put in a glossary. You explain all these complicated terms that nobody understands when they get their electric bill or their gas bill. What's the therm? What's the KW? That's really that important. You know what? My, my, I live in California. Okay. Yeah. I have two houses, not enormous houses, just two houses. And my electric bill every month is over $2,300 a month. It's insane. You need to read and my if, book. Even if one's a vacation rental, even if it's boarded up and no one's in it for a month, I still get a big bill. It's crazy. So yeah, I'm excited about everything <laughs> you're talking about. And like, cause yeah. I had so many people and you know what I learned, which was interesting. Someone mentioned to me that the solar people only make money if it's on your roof. So they are not really big advocates of putting solar beyond your roof. No. They'll tell you you're not a candidate. That doesn't mean you can't get solar. And there's so right. much great stuff, like so many things you have in your book, by the way, real quick. I want to Thank share you. your book cover. I love your book cover. This is beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So tell us about your book and how people can get a hold of it today. You're doing today, an incredible launch. 
It's and, getting launched on Amazon. Uh, and Amazon. by the way, you're a number one best-selling author. You've been doing a lot of campaigning on this uh, before like, the official you. launch. So congratulations. So on it's that. on Amazon. It's special 99 cent offer now um, for the pre-launch. And you can go buy it and download it. It's a Kindle version. Um, but it will come out in soft cover in a few weeks too. And and um, it'll actually have even more illustrations and things in it. But it's really designed to be, um, the reason my clients have, I sort of talked about it in just my regular conversations for work. And people are like, man, my employees need to have this book because they're either in the energy business and they can't explain it to their clients or their customers, or they're interested in just the stuff that I've compiled from all these different sources. It's not political because, and frankly, if you go up some of the, some of the even stuff on the government can be politically slanted one way or the other. And I have a neutral approach. I'm fuel agnostic. We need everything. The world is the more and more complicated and we have the more, if we, you know, we want to put out everything be electrification, you're going to need a lot more power and where are we going to get that? So I think we need everything. I think we need to, you know, be, responsible in how we use energy and and that's just a good midwestern upbringing i had about stewardship but mm -hmm. my book you know basically breaks it down into very simple little steps you can take you don't have to go put in a fancy geothermal heat pump to save energy you can just make sure you change your your furnace filters for example and that'll help a lot too so um so i guess the the whole purpose of the book is to sort of break down a very complicated nebulous idea of what is energy and why do I, and I don't understand it. And I just have to pay the bill every month. And like, no, you can take control. It's, you know, we're all about helping people understand what they do. And the more they understand energy and how important it is. And then I realized, it doesn't that really scary at all. It isn't that complicated. And so most of what we might do as a consultant is help companies, utilities deliver programs to their to their customers that they make they can understand what they're doing why they're doing it why should i seal up my house why should i you know put in a fan in my my basement or something so just simple airy ways to help reduce your energy bill in a and you don't have to spend a lot of money so tell us again the name of your book and it's on it's launching today special handbook for energy yeah handbook for it's the handbook for energy savings it's a now bestseller on amazon and it's launching today Seven and easy ways. So the handbook for energy saving, seven easy ways. Easy ways to save energy and the planet. Energy and the planet. Catherine Johnson, congratulations. Very excited for you, my okay. friend. You also have other exciting news. You're going to be on TV in New York. Yeah, uh, I'm going to be on a uh, cable show in sometime in, starting in November. Um, I have my, my, my regular podcast, which is the KJ Show, which talks about energy topics every week. Well, we're going to do a streamlined podcast more deeper dive in the cable show in New York city in prime time. And so it, basically it gets into, we have all the, uh, all this information. Energy is a sixth of our economy and no one understands how important it is. And it's more than drilling. It's more than a political issue. It needs to be, it's fundamental to our, to our health, comfort and safety. And so I talk about today, I just talked about net zero energy homes and, and what they are. So we talk about, I, and I have guests on and, and we talk about energy trends and, and, you know, what makes sense. And that's a point of view that they, we don't get a lot. Well, um, I used to be a journalist. I like to be objective and, and hopefully um, my shows try to present both sides. So Catherine, now you're, you're obviously a specialist. You're one of the best in the world as an expert in this space. Okay. Which I love that you wrote this book. Thank you. What do you think happens? What's going to happen to the people who don't have this knowledge, who don't learn this about energy? Well, you know, no matter if it's going to affect their pocketbook and that's really an issue. I think we just saw with the latest election, but basically even if, even if things are going well, you still need to not waste money. And nobody wants to waste money. I mean, we, we've forgotten the generation of the Depression where my, my family came from, where they saved everything and everything was so important. And oh, they yeah. Turn over. off the lights. <laughs> we have a disposable culture. And and we have a culture that just doesn't understand that, you know, that 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 Game Boy you plug in uses as much electricity as your refrigerator or your big screen, your color big screen TV uses a lot of electricity and you don't need to use it all the time. You could turn them off, turn it down, get a power strip. So um, people don't, you know, we're living in tough times economically and it's gonna happen, you know, we have ep economic issues, but even in good times, you wanna save your money and you wanna put it things that are more exciting or more interesting than your energy bill. And if you can figure out a way to save energy 
The ironic thing is the electric and gas utilities want you to do this. This is why they do programs. They don't want to build more power plants. It's too expensive. They don't want to have to do more distribution lines. They would rather have you save energy and lower your bill than waste energy because then they have to provide it and it's a waste. So, you know, okay. if you don't buy my book, you're going to waste money and you can waste up to, I actually, in my book, I have about ways. If you just did a few things I suggested, you'll save about $500 in your energy bill. If you do um, you Is know, that more, 500 a year or a month, 500 a year. Okay. So a 99 cent investment people is going to get you a $500 return. Yes. I don't know anything on wall street. <laughs> <laughs> or in any investment program that can do that. So this is a no brainer, my friends. Right, right exactly. And here's the cool part. If you're in the US and you go to this book page and you click to buy the book, just below you can say buy for others. And on Amazon, you can actually buy the book and you can tr choose the drop down menu if you want 15 or 20 copies, even as an ebook. And Amazon will give you links that you can send to other people and redeem. What about this for a Christmas gift for all of our kids and teenagers or young adults to yeah. go on their own and pay their own bills? This is an incredible gift you can give for somebody. Tell us about your corporate. You, you have corporate programs available as well um, for people that want to buy your book in bulk now that you're getting your print book ready as yes. well. Yes, I'm getting my print book ready. And, and the folks that I've talked to, what I want to do is give them a special, you know, discount price. But the other thing is, even if these people, um, it's really interesting. I've been in the business for so long. There are new employees in and long-term energy employees that maybe only work in their little silo. And so what I've discovered, I used to do training programs of electric utility employees on how to understand their electric bill. If you can believe it, the utilities paid me to come in and teach their, their employees this, the customer staff. So the point is, if, if a corporation wants to really empower, literally empower their employees and help them save money, I um, have presentations available. I'm happy to talk with them and I'm happy to give them a discount on a bulk purchase, but it'll actually help their employees not only understand what they're selling as a utility, but also help them in their everyday lives. And the employee utility, employee, utility employees are sort of like the ambassadors. And if they can't answer the basic questions about why I want to do energy efficiency in their neighborhood, it doesn't help their company at all. So that's what I'm doing. I love that. So people can either come in and hire you as a speaker, a trainer, a consultant. You have yep. so many ways to help people save money. And the bottom yep. line is where everything's at right now in the world and the economy. Everybody needs to save money. These are simple things you can do. So any investment, whether it's the book or training or speaking, is going to have a good return on that investment yep. for, for people. Um, and also um, tell us you have a free gift, I understand, or something you wanted to share with our audience for people that are coming in and getting your book today, celebrating uh, launch. Today, to, to the ebook, they get a free, they get a free subscription to my Substack newsletter, which is also on energy and also provides insights into some of the really fun, fun, funky things that are happening in the energy world. When I do my TV show every week, I talk about you can't mix this stuff up. And some of the energy news is just so funny that it's it's really, it's really kind of you know, I kind of make it like energy doesn't have to be serious. It can be actually funny. Like when a celebrity's EV breaks down on the highway and has to get towed. Um, and that happened the, like we were going to Vegas and there was like this, the, the highway was blocked and a six hour drive turned into 18 hours. Right. And I had actually driven a hybrid vehicle. We have several cars, but I, I chose the right vehicle because I saw cars running out of gas. I saw every Tesla in the planet was stuck in the desert Yep. And there was no charging stations. It took us four time. hours to drive 20 minutes. It was horrible. And yes. I was like, I chose the right car right here. But let exactly. me, so remind people, how do they get in touch with you if they buy a copy of your book today and they want to take advantage of the free newsletter sure. offer and all that? Um, they go up to my, my website, which is johnsonconsults.com. There's a link there to um, buy the book and there'll be also a link to in, get my sub stack for free. And when I, my, um, but the really fun part is when my soft cover book comes out, then I'm going to start giving away trees. Um, and so that we're going to build a, a, a little forest, all the, all the, all the folks that are buying my soft cover book will get an automatic uh, tree. I link, love that. So and they they're going to be able to watch their tree grow. They they buy a physical book that's paper and you replant and get a, a tree. whole tree. They get to plant so a tree every in book you buy gets them a tree. Yes. And, and they're saving the planet. And you get to watch your tree grow. And it's going to oh. be all my readers. It's going to be all my little readers. We're going to have our own little forest. And we're going to, you know, that's another way to save the planet. Because one of my favorite utility programs, okay. and the reason I did this is, 
utilities are very inventive. And my very favorite program of all the ones I've worked on over the years is trees, tree planting, where they're actually encouraging people to plant trees in the right place to give a shade. Now there's another program I'm working on with the utility where they're going to actually plant trades, trees in the main city to reduce the urban heat island effect. So I've been a big fan of tree programs, and I thought this was a nice tie-in. Oh my gosh, I love it so much. I'm a tree nerd. I, I have so many pictures of me literally hugging trees. Yep. And I have yep. a, a vacation house that we use for like retreats and writing retreats up near Yosemite. So I'm up there a lot and I just, I love trees so much. So I so, so respect what you're doing. And I love that you're educating people about the energy efficiency is to not just save money, but save the planet and replant those trees. That is so special. Yep. Captain, thank you so much for being with us thank today. You. Congratulations, my friend, on all your success and taking action. It was just these little steps here and there that you took. You know, what advice would you give to people that are that that are sitting there saying, I want to write a book. I want to start getting on stages. I, I know I have this expertise to share with the world, but I don't know where to get started. I don't know what to do. What advice would you give to those people that are kind of on the fence of like what to do? I uh, hire you for one thing, and your team, <laughs> Thank you. um, which is an unsolicited testimonial. Um, your team is fabulous. Um, I got a, I learned a lot, even though I've written other books. This was a very seamless and easy process, and I'm very, very you know grateful that I had all that support. But you also need to sort of you know make it in your mind. Everybody has an important thing to share, whether it's a personal story or their expertise, like other professionals like myself. And it's sort of selfish to keep it all bottled up. Why don't you, why don't you share it? So to me, part of the reason I wrote this book was a labor of love. I, I really wanted to share all that wisdom I've gotten from working with utilities for 30 something years and give it to the average person. Cause you know, I got it kind of the hard way and here's an easy way to get it. And, and it makes a difference. It really does. Oh, That's thank you I, for that. Well, I mean, and again, kudos to you. You did all the work. We just, you know, we're, we're, we're just kind of like giving you direction and right. no, you you're good advice. You advice. We can give you coaching and knowledge, but if you don't take action, like knowledge alone, isn't oh, going to, yeah. it's not going to like, you can sit there and pray, but God's not going to get you off the couch and write your book for you. Right. Exactly. So you did right. the work. So be proud of yourself, celebrate you take that second to just breathe in those accolades. It's so busy. You get so busy doing things and accomplishing things that we forget to just celebrate these special moments. Tell me, what was that like when this morning, when you found out that you, your book was number one on the bestseller list? How did I that was, feel? I was just, I was, I was blown away. I was so excited and I was so happy. And I let, um, I sent out emails to my friends and they're all like, this is so exciting. I said, well, then go buy, buy a copy of the book. Um, <laughs> and leave a review. All my, yeah. All my friends know, you know, this is what I do, but um, even if they're not in the business, they support me. But, um, but I think to me, it was just like another achievement in my, in my goals. I have bucket goal. Obviously I have a pretty lot of goals. If you don't get a doctorate without having goals, but this is another real, you know, thing I can say, I've done this. I've, I've accomplished this in my life. I've written a book. It's a bestseller. It's going to help people. Um, that's you know going to get a lot more reading than my dissertation ever will. And so I think it's just one more way to say you know I'm making an, a positive impact on the world. And that was really exciting. It's really exciting. My family's very pleased with me and proud. And not that they ever doubted I could do it, but they're just nothing surprises them. But but they're um, they're very proud of me. And um, so I was just pleased. I just wish my dad was around because he would be I was gonna say, doing cartwheels. Yeah. I know your dad is, is so happy for you, you know, yeah. and he invested so much in you and he would be so, so proud of you. Yeah. Um, yeah. I have one of those dads, like I said, and, and you know, one of my greatest joys was being able to help my dad write his own book. Yeah. yeah. Now it's written for, and it's like, that being able to give that back. So the investment your dad made in you is paying off and yep. getting goosebumps because I'm thinking <laughs> he built, you are, whoops, sorry, I dropped my phone. You are his legacy and you are taking that knowledge and you are sharing it with the world. And that is the greatest gift that he gave to you and that he gave to the world through right. you. So yeah, and he, he was and, a yeah. fabulous person and- um Aww. And I'm just, uh, I'm really glad that uh, I took his advice. Um, that's another thing. Listen to your parents. They often know more than you think. That's okay, my... kids. Are you listening? Uh, yeah. Thank you, Catherine. Yes. Thank you thank so you. much. I And God bless you for all you're doing for the people, the planet, everything. Um, this is, you know, uh, one of my favorite subjects, things to talk about. 
Thank you for being here. All of you for watching, for supporting Catherine, her book. Go buy it, share it, leave an honest review that all of that will be helpful and supportive to her as well on her journey. And congratulations on all your success. Good luck with the podcast, your TV interviews, and now taking this bestseller status and leveraging it to really become that authority and that voice in the industry. I know we're going to see a lot more of you, Catherine. I'm thrilled for you. Thank you. And again, thank you everyone for, for being here, for your support. I'm Melanie thank Warner. You. If you need help, if you guys want to write your own book, you want support, go to the links below in this chat, in, in on this post, and you'll see our website. You can fill out an application. You can get some free training. You can hop on a call with somebody in our team. You can come to one of our events, masterclass. There's so much information that we have to share with you. So you never have to do this on your own, right? There's, there's always somebody that's done it. The thing I'm the most proud of is we have a 100% success rate over the years where every single client that has written a book with us has hit number one on the bestseller list. And it has gone on to do really big things in their life and their career. So we're very excited and celebrating Catherine today. Thank you so much, all of you for being here as well and look forward to where you go from here. All right. I, thank you so much. Thank you thank so much. You. Take care. We'll see Take everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.